today's topic is about dividend policy. Okay. Um, in today's discussion, you will learn the following. At, uh, first, you can be able to define dividends and enumerate the types of dividends. Understand the pros and cons of paying dividends to shareholders. Number three, in this discussion, you will understand dividend policy and the different theories relative to it. And also, you will learn how to, uh, the, uh, you will learn to enumerate and explain the different types of dividend policy and the factors affecting them. And understand the meaning of stock purchase and stock split. Okay, class. Uh, before we proceed, I will remind you that the, bro uh, that the scope of this learning outcomes, uh, the other part will be for next week. Okay, so because we will only uh, understand the different today, after this lang tayo, after to understand dividend policy. And then next week, okay, at the same time, okay, we will have the other uh, learning outcomes, okay. But dahil, uh, so today we only have the part one, okay. So uh, let's now proceed, okay. Dividend policy, what do we mean by dividend policy, okay. I'll show you first, class, yung financial statement so you can have an idea. Ano ba to? Bakit ba nagkakaroon ng dividend? Okay. Uh, we cannot proceed, as I have said, yung what is dividend policy if you don't know kung saan nang gagaling itong dividend. Okay. Uh, for us, we know na the business organization type According to legal form, we have the single proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. So in corporation type, we have this kind of dividend. Okay, saan nang gagaling siya itong dividend? Of course, nang gagaling, ma, the dividend will come from the retained earnings of the corporation. Okay, so I'll show you class the income statement here. Okay, so in my income statement for the year 2020, okay, my total retained earnings is one, ito in million kasi to, no, in million, okay, is 1,202,000. That is my retained earnings. Okay, ngayon, in a corporation, dito sila nagbibase kung, kung magbibigay, magbideclare ba sila ng dividend. Okay, so, by and by, we will define what is dividend. But at least, you know kung saan lang gagaling ang dividend. It will come from the retained earnings of the company based on the financial statement. Hindi naman siya pwede mag-declare na wala siyang pagbabasihan. Okay? So, laging merong financial statement na magiging basis of the declaration. Okay? So, Yan, yung yung retain yung retain earn yung kita na yan yung the income of the years na ipapasok sa retain earnings makikita nyo nandoon siya ilalagay siya sa retain earnings ng balance sheet kasi ang ang retain earnings should be in the balance sheet okay so ayan ito yung balance sheet natin kumita tayo ng 1,200,000 2,000, okay? Kaya ang total retained earnings na natin ay 8,542. Okay? So, paano muna na lamang tama, tama di ba? Itong 90, this is 2019. Our 2019 retained earnings was 7,240,000. Now, in 2020, we have 8,542 because there was a positive income 
from the 2020 that was accumulated and to be forwarded to the retained earnings account. Okay, so that is your concept. Okay, so let's now have the dividend policy. Okay. A dividend policy class is a major cash outlay. Okay. In a corporation, they are usually uncertain between paying dividends or not. Okay. So the company, which is the corporation, okay, it, that is uncertain for them to decide to give dividends or not. Okay. Remember that dividend is a cash outlay. Ibig sabihin, mababawasan yung cash mo sa, sa company mo. So, kan sa kanila, hindi yan certain to decide. Okay. If not, the profits earned will be reinvested in the business. Kung hindi sila magbe-declared, of course, yung pera nila na nasa retained earnings lang na pinakita natin kanina can still be used in their business. Okay, kung meron silang bagong project, they can use the money. If yes naman, how much the earnings will be given out? So kung magbibigay sila, that is the question. Okay, magkano ang ibibigay nila? So in our discussion today, we will have some example of how dividends will be given out. Okay. And that is an example... Uh, terminology uh, that is a dividend policy okay now let's have some terminologies affected by this dividend policy of course we need to define what is dividend okay so sa tagalog para mas maintindihan natin tinatawag natin itong dividendo okay dividendo ito yung kita ng mga stockholders sa kanilang pera na nang bumili sila ng stock sa corporation. Okay? So, let's define it in English. Okay? A dividend is the part of the net income or earnings of a corporation which are distributed by the company to the shareholders. And who are these shareholders? The shareholders are the investors or owners of corporation. Okay. So now we know, ang binibigyan na ng dividend of course are the investors or the shareholders. Another terminology is that is a dividend policy that we uh, partly defined a while ago. Okay. So for more, uh, more understanding, okay, what is this dividend policy? A dividend policy class is a proposal or a scheme made by top management. Okay, top management ang nag-declare niya na to explain or justify the rational relative to the firm's dividends payment to the shareholders. So, there is a scheme provided the top management kung paano ibibigay yung dividend payment to the shareholders. Or, and also, there is, it is a set of guidelines uses to help the company to decide of whether to pay dividends or not. Okay, so nakapaloob din sa dividend policy kung mag-declare ba sila o hindi. Okay, and then how much and what proportion of the earnings will be paid to the shareholders? So, included yan doon sa dividend policy. Okay. Magkano ba ibibigay nila? Alangan, hindi naman pe pwede class, all the retained earnings will be declared as dividend. Hindi pwedeng ganon. It's only a portion. Kaya nga, the portion of this must be decided pa. Okay? Oh, another terminology, that is the reason why I show you the balance sheet. Okay? For you to conceptualize what is retained earnings. Retained earnings, as defined, it is an accumulated net income or earnings of a corporation that is retained by the company at the end of a particular 
reporting period. Okay. So, kaya nga retain eh. Diba? From the word itself, it is retained in the firm, in the company, in the corporation. Okay? And retained earnings is also a percentage or portion of the net earnings of a corporation not paid out as dividend but held to be reinvested in the business. Okay? So, yun din ang ibig sabihin ng retained earnings. Okay? Part siya ng net earnings na hindi mo binayad as dividend because you wanted it to be reinvested in another investment or in another business okay so yun ang retained earnings that is the in simple term okay it is the income of the corporation that is retained to the firm now we have the dividend payout ratio Okay. This dividend payout ratio, it reveals, okay, ito na yung portion. It reveals the portion of the current net earnings that the firm will pay its shareholders in the form of dividend. Okay. So, yun na. Okay. Pag sinabi natin dividend payout, ibig sabihin, talagang magbabayad na yung company, magbibigay na siya, magdideclare na siya ng ng dividend but a portion of the current net earnings yun. Okay? So, ang mga question mang, sa dividend payout is that what portion the company is reinvesting in the business for future growth? How much is the pay of obligations? Or add to cash reserve? Okay? So, in the dividend payout, meron pa silang mga question on this. Okay? Okay. Uh, kailangan i-consider natin na we have man, we need money na gagamitin natin in the future project. Paano kung magdi-declare na tayo ng, ng dividend? And, and if it is a cash dividend, that will be a deduction in our cash liquidity. Okay? And normally, the dividend payout ratio is computed by dividing dividend per share by the earnings per share. Okay. Plus, in this dividend policy, okay, yung mga economists natin, yung mga researchers, nagkaroon sila ng mga maraming arguments in this dividend policy. Okay. In a, in a short while, we can have this, um, this argument. Okay. Now, let's have first the advantages of paying dividends, okay? Ano ba yung, ano, ano ba yung advantages niya, okay? When paying dividends, okay, the cash dividends helps in establishing the prices of equity, okay? Kung nagbayad daw tayo ng, kung a corporation will pay a dividend to the shareholders, nakaka-establish siya ng price. Totoo naman yun, di ba? Kung nag-declare ka, okay, let's sabihin na natin mag-declare ka na dati ang price ng stocks mo 2 pesos but because of your declaration, magiging 220 na siya. So, you were able to establish the price, okay, the equity. And then, another advantage is that it attracts investors, particularly those who want return in the forms of dividends. Okay, totoo naman yun. Diba when we, you know, in the words of Mark, yung bawa, itong si Ana, okay, meron siyang investment, bumili siya ng stocks sa BDO, okay, ang bilin niya sa stocks ng BDO, 500. Tapos ngayong 2020, yung binili niya na yun, 5 years ago, 500, ngayong 2020, nasa 1,000 na. Oh, narinig niya yun. Kinento niya ngayon kay Tristan. Okay, si Tristan na-attract siya. Wow! Ang laki ng, ng ano, uh, up niya. Okay? So, kung meron kang ilang stocks, ang laki na ng pera mo. Okay? So, that's it. Okay? Nakakapag-attract siya ng investors kapag nagbibigay ang isang company ng dividend. Kasi ibig sabihin na yung company niya ay nag-grow. Okay. Next, Okay. Another advantage is that increase 
or higher cash dividend increases equity per share. Okay? So, kung, of course, minsan, yung mga shareholders, they will get, uh, nag-declared ka, okay? So, kunwari, ang, declare, ang pera niya, 500,000 lang the, eh, in the company because nag-declared ka, naging 550, okay? Eh, hindi naman niya kukunin yan, i-invest din niya. So, in, uh, in return, lumalaki lang din yung FDP, okay? And it can help reduce agency costs that might arise from management and shareholders conflict due to excess cash. Okay, class. Di ba ang corporation, uh, you know, um, hindi lang naman sila focus on their current uh, this type of business. Okay. For example, uh, Ang business nila ay sa shoes lang, manufacturer of shoes, okay? But then, naisip nila na, oh, bakit hindi naman sila mag-invest into bag? Bag making, samantalang total, anyway, they have the, already the materials na parehas na naman pwedeng gamitin sa bag. Okay, and because of that, because the corporation or the firms, may nakikita siya na po foresight siya na merong business, so, ang gagawin niya, hindi muna siya magdi-declare ng dividend. And that is what we call the agency cost. Kung, kung nag-declare ng dividend ang isang company, maiiwasan na to, okay? Hindi na siya mag invest into other business na hindi mo rin naman guaranteed 100%. Nakikita ka, okay? Pero syempre, Sa business, the greater the risk, the greater is the yield. Okay. So, but as per theory, okay, kung one of the advantages is the agency cost. And agency cost means the investing your money that is in the retained earnings into other business. Okay. Kung merong advantages, ang paying the dividends, meron ding disadvantages. Okay. One is, in paying dividends, it decreases internal sources of financing and management might rely on costly external financing. Okay. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, class, kung meron tayong payment of dividend, there might be a possibility na yung ating capital ay, maba, ay of course mababawasan when we declare dividends Ma, maaaring we might result into borrowing money okay manghihiram tayo ng pera and from borrowing of course we can we will have additional cost and that is the interest and the processing okay so costly ang external financing talagang meron siyang expense. So, kung meron siyang dividend, we will uh, have this costly external financing. Okay. And second, okay, shareholders will pay tax for dividends received. Or take note on that. Okay. Kung ikaw, si Anna, Miss Anna, and si Mr. Tristan, meron kayong stocks. Okay. Bumili kayo ng stocks. Tapos, nag declared ng dividend. Okay. Your dividend that you are going to receive is subject to tax. Okay. Hindi yan free. Okay. Yung nasa business, hindi pa final tax yun. So, yung company, the corporation already incurred tax from their income. Pero pag dinistribute pa nila yung dividend, the stockholders will pay the tax for the dividends received, okay? Okay, individual income tax for the dividends that you receive and that is in the law, okay? So that is one of the disadvantage pagka nag-receive ka ng dividend for the shareholders, okay? And another disadvantage in paying dividends is that when dividend once declared, Dividends cannot be reduced without affecting the equity per share. 
So kaya ang mga corporation class, before they will really have to declare, okay, they will undergo that declaration of dividend, pinag-aaralan nila ng mapagalian. Kasi once na declared, hindi nila yan pwedeng bawiin. Okay? Hindi yan pwedeng sasabihin mo, ay, nakamali ako mo. That cannot be. Okay? So, yeah, what, that is the, those are the disadvantages. Next, there are, as I have said a while ago, okay, the this researcher, some anong mga unang nung mga as early as 1963, the financial analysts, okay, they have so many arguments about this dividend policy, and as per theory, okay, we have the two schools of thought on dividend policy. Okay. One is the school of dividend irrelevance and another one is school of dividend irrelevance c class they are they are these are opposites to each other one is irrelevance and the other one is relevant okay so let's find out who are these researchers who are in favor of irrelevance and who are those researchers researchers who favor relevance okay okay let's talk about school of dividend irrelevance okay. in this from the investor's point of view payment of dividend is irrelevant okay para do sa mga investor irrelevant now why for they sell portions of their investment in equity if they are in need of cash. O, kasi naman daw, bakit naman nila kailangan ang, para sa kanila, they don't care about the dividend because if they wanted money, they can easily sell their shares of the stocks. Okay? Para maging liquid yung kanilang uh, share, uh, stocks, magkakaroon na sila agad ng cash by simply selling it. Okay? But for the firm, paying dividends or not is irrelevant in determining the price of shares of stock. So with the market value of the firm and even the weighted average of the cost of capital. Okay. Plus, itong mga talk class, hindi yan ganun kaisi. Ha? Marami siyang ifs. Okay, makikita natin mamaya. Meron siyang kulatilya. Okay, meron siyang conditions. Okay. This dividend irrelevance was proposed by Franco Modigliani and Merton Miller. Okay, so ito yung mga researchers. Si, wala pa kayo noon. As, as uh, early as 1958 and 1961. Buti na lang wala pa rin ako noon. Okay, kasi 1963 ako. Okay, so matat... So sila yung mga nagkaroon ng arguments tungkol dyan. Ano kaya ang gustong iparating ni... Merton Miller and Modigliani, okay, about their thoughts. Okay. So, we call the Modigliani and Miller as M and N theory, okay, based sa uh, surname nila, okay. According to them, dividend policy is irrelevant as it has no effect on the equity share, of the equity share price, and even on the cost of capital. Okay, yun ang believe nila. Okay, because according to them, capital structure of a company is irrelevant in future business projects. Okay, and the capital gains and dividends are both the same as returns in the perception of the investors. Therefore, the value of the company depends on the firm's earnings or income. Okay. So para sa kanila class, okay, mas ma, uh, mas uh, particular sila. Yung sa talagang pinakita natin kanina yung retained earnings. So whatever is the retained earning as long as it has in big amount, they don't care kung mag kung magdi-declare ba ng dividend. For them is parang irrelevant, okay? Kasi kaya naman eh kung kung malaki ang retained earnings at kaya naman magbigay, so what's the problem? 
Okay? That is their thinking. Kasi hindi naman nila, for them, they are not after to use the, retain, the money in the retained earnings in future business projects. Because for them, as long as the capital, their capital, paid in capital, the capital, the total amount of the capital is good enough for their future projects. And on the part of investor, investors can produce cash inflow from their shares, even if their shares pay dividends or not. If his shares are not dividend paying, he can sell portions of his investment if he needs cash. Okay, yon in favor din siya doon. Okay, na sa part ng investor, they do, wala naman yan eh. Kasi kung if they really need money, the dividends that will be declared in from the retained earnings, okay, is irrelevant. Kasi kumbaga portion lang yon. Okay, so if you really need money, sell your stock. And if the investors do not need money, he can reinvest his dividend in shares. Okay. So, kung talaga hindi niya, talaga naman yung pera niya, nandun doon lang. So, wag yung wala. Okay. Wag lang yung wala, hindi na mababawasan. So, pwede pa rin siyang mag business. Okay. This theory class of MMM theory, okay, will make their hypothesis valid. Okay, yung hypothesis nila valid if the capital markets are perfect. Ibig sabihin, perfect ang capital market if there are no taxes or transaction costs involved. Ibig sabihin no, yung company mo ay walang mga problem about taxes. Okay? Or wala kang ibang problem. Ang company mo is financially sound. And company has fixed investment policy. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, before nag-start ang company nila, meron na talaga silang investment policy na hindi related dito sa retained earnings na maakaka-apekto sa dividend. Okay. And also, for a perfect market, according to them, there is no uncertainty as to the company's future prob projects, okay? Pero take note, yung hypothesis ni M&M &M for their critics in their real world, okay? Sinasabi ng mga critics na it is not possible for an economy to have the absence of taxes and transaction costs, di ba? Para sa kanila kasi, good company nila, financially sound, wala silang ganit problema dito. Pero sinasabi naman ng critics, there's no such thing na ang company ay walang problema sa tax and transaction cost. Okay? Ano ba yung transaction cost? Okay? The transaction costs are the commission paid to stockholders. And also another kind of transaction cost is that the cost of travel and time to complete an exchange. Diba? Kasi class, when you buy an stocks, merong broker. Hindi ka naman pwedeng pumunta. Nimbawa, gusto mo bumili ng stocks. Gusto ka sa stock exchange. Pabili nga ng, ng 100 stocks ng video. No, hindi ganun. You will get uh, makikipag uh, connect ka sa broker. And that broker you need to pay a commission to that broker plus other fee. Na ito nga yun. Okay? So, yun ang sinasabi nila ng NMM, but ito naman ay ino-oppose ng mga critics because there's no such thing in real world. Okay. So, yun ang sinasabi ni MMM. Under, okay. And another theories of dividend irrelevance Okay, the, the last one is the residual theory. Okay, when we say residual, yung talagang, di ba when we say residue, yung tira-tira. Okay, so ito, it's something like that. Okay, residual theory. Okay, ano man ibig sabihin ng residual theory? 
residual theory, the company pays dividends to its shareholders after it has allotted or keep cash for all their attractive investment opportunities. Okay? So, kung nila lang yung natira, yun lang i-declared -de nila. Kasi, before they will declare, of course, akunin na nila yung mga gagamitin nilang pera for their future investment. Okay? So, another, in dividend policy is highly influenced by prospective investment opportunities and the availability of cash to finance them. Okay. So, ang dividend policy talaga, okay, di ba? Kung magkano yung matitira, okay, yun na lang ay declared So, kaya ang sinasabi nila ay affected ng prospective investment. Okay. Kung walang investment, as I have said a while ago, agency cost, wala kang other investment, pure na pure, makukuha mo yung dividend mo na i-declare nila kasi wala ibang paggagamitan yung retained earnings. Okay? Next, company cannot miss out desirable investment projects to distrib distribute dividend to shareholders. Okay, kung may nakikita yung company na talagang desirable investment, positive ang tingin nila, ay eh, talagang hindi sila magdidistribute na dividend. Okay? And investors, on the other hand, do not care if the firm pays dividends or not. Their concern is the possibility of higher cash flow in the future that might result to capital appreciation of their shares and eventually higher dividends payments. Ano ibig sabihin nito, class? Okay. With yung mga investors... Yung mga owners of the stocks, hindi sila masyadong after with a dividend. Kasi because they believe na if there will be no dividend declaration, the money in the retained earnings will stay there so that it can be used in the future opportunities or uh, positive investment na magkakaroon ng gain na yung gain na yan, Later din naman, sila din naman ang makakinabang. Okay? They will also gain from that investment na magiging, kumbaga class, yung pera nila, okay, igugulong lang ng, igugulong ng company para mas malaki ang makukuha nilang dividend in the future. For example, ngayon, magdi-declared ng, ng dividend. Okay? Uh, ang di-declared lang, so, kunwari, piso sa bawat share. So, madami naman kayong stockholders that piso in that one peso in the num total numbers of stockholders, it will amounted, amounted to, let's say, 5 million. Okay. If yung, kung yung 5 million mo, kunwari lang, yung 5 million mo, ininvest mo into another business. Okay. Baka mamaya, yung investment na yan will gain 3 pesos per share. Diba? So, yun ang thinking nila under residual theory. Okay? So, for them, irrelevant kung hindi magbayad na dividend. The school of dividend naman, ito, contrary to school of dividend irrelevance, ito naman, relevance for them, gusto nila, makukuha nila yung dividend. Okay? Anong argument in this school of thought? Okay. The argument is that if the firm pays dividends, its stock prices will be higher. Okay. And the market value and the weighted average cost of capital will be lower. Okay. Sino ang nag-favor dito? Si Gordon, again, in 1963. Okay. Kapapanganak ko pa lang nun. Matagal na rin pala to. Matanda na to. Matagal na to. Okay? And Littner in 1962 and Walter in 1963. Okay. Sinasabi nila, for them, kailangan magbayad ka ng dividend para magkaroon ng magandang goodwill yung stock mo. At kapag maganda yung stock prices mo, okay, makaka-apekto yan sa market value. Okay? Oh, so, bakit kaya? Let's find out. Ano sinasabi nitong si 
Gordon and Lipner. Gordon and Lipner, okay, for them, it is relevant because the annual growth rate of dividends and firm's current stock price determine the value of the company's cost of equity financing. Okay. So, para sa kanila, nakasalalay daw yung growth rate doon sa dividends declaration. Okay. Dahil pag nag-declare ka ng dividends, makaka-apekto sa current stock price. Okay. But this assumption underlying this theory are if the firm has no debt. Okay. Kung walang utang yung company, okay, pwede mag-declare. So easy to declare. And if the retained earnings are used to finance investment projects. Okay. Okay, according to Walter Mulder, Walter, okay, the dividend is equal to dividend payout ratio for them. So, ibig sabihin talaga, for them, it's really have to, you have really to pay me, okay, for the dividend, okay, on the part of the stockholders, okay. And we also have one theory under clientele effect hypothesis okay in the clientele effect hypothesis the tax on dividends and capital gain tax might influence the shareholders preference for dividends against capital gains okay and ibig sabihin nito okay. kasi class when when you are going to sell your stock for example to see Ikaw, si Ana, si Chista, meron kayong stocks from DBO and you wanted to sell your stocks. Okay? Pag nagbenta kayo ng stocks mo, magbabayad din kayo ng capital gain tax. Okay? So ano yung gusto mo? Magbabayad ka ba ng capital gain tax pero ma-i-incash mo yung stocks mo? Or kunin mo na lang kaya yung dividends mo para may cash ka rin. So it depends, di ba, sa needs ng tao. Okay? But ito yung sinasabi niya. Okay? Next. Investors are often interested in the after tax returns. Okay. So, alam naman, uh, di ba? Pag ang retained earnings, it is always on the after tax. Okay. So, ang investors daw always, di ba, pinakita ko sa inyo kanina yung retained earnings. Doon lang naman, kung ikaw ay isang investors, lagi mong titignan kung magkano ba yung mapupunta sa retained earnings. Ibig sabihin, nadidak na lahat doon, pati tax. Okay, pati yung preference, ibang dapat bayaran nila obligations. Okay? So, yun ang after daw ang mga stockholders under clientele effect hypothesis. Okay. Ito may kulatilya siya. Okay? For low brackets investors, it will be much interested in investing in firms that pay high and unchanging dividends. Okay? Para doon sa mga low bracket, hindi sila masyadong mapera siguro, okay? Mas ma, mas uh, in favor sila, okay? Doon sa unchanging dividends. Okay? Kung kung every year ganun ang declaration ng dividends, mas prepare nila 'yon. At least kasi yung mga ganung type ng tao kasi, kumbaga, na-program na nila 'yan. O ito, magkakapera ako dito sa ganitong time. Ganito ang bibilin ko. Okay? Na-program na nila kasi. Okay? So, kung hindi nila gusto yung paiba-iba. Okay? For the high bracket naman, investors retain most of their income to be reinvested. Okay? So, yung namang mga may pera, they don't like the payment of dividend. Mas gusto nila yung company, invest na lang uli sa ibang business. Okay? Kasi meron naman silang pera, okay? Next is some of the clientele are also interested between dividends and capital gains. Okay, so meron ding mga, may mga tao, may mga stockholders din na parehas nilang gusto ang dividends and at the same time gusto rin nila ang capital gain. So, ibig sabihin class, favor sila mag Ma tumaas ang value ng stocks nila if not paying dividend kasi mag-invest ulit sa ibang business 
or pwedeng lumaki din ang stocks because of the prestige na yung stocks nila ay malaki ang dividend. Okay, so iba-iba ang perception ng mga investors. Okay. Okay, so that ends. Okay, I have here class one. Okay, I will show you yung exper uh, the practical application of dividend payout. Okay, para for ano for your reference na ano ba to? Okay, under residual theory. Okay, can you see this class residual theory? Hindi. Okay, I'll share another one. Hindi pa po, ma'am. Okay, I'll share another one. Residual theory. Okay, this one. Okay, okay na. Okay, I have your example of residual theory. Okay? It states here that RST... RST has an optimal capital structure of 45% debt and 55% equity. So the capital, the capital of the, that RST is 45 nang galing sa utang at yung 55 nasa equity talaga, sa capital talaga. For the year, the, the EBIT, okay, earnings before income tax, EBIT, has a balance of 2 million. Okay, 75 of which are allotted, are allotted, are allotted for the ordinary equity shareholders. At sino siyang sabi yung uh, ordinary shareholders? The ordinary shareholders class are the common stockholders. Okay, so inalat daw yung 75% para sa common stock. And the, the company cost of capital is 15%. It has also the following prospective investment. Okay, di ba sabi natin kung hindi magbabayad ng dividend, the company will put the money in the future projects. Okay, in my example, I have here a apat na project. One, two, three, four. The expected investment. Okay, so imagine, ang investment ng number one ay 1,200,000. Yung isa naman ay 500. Thousand, yung isa naman ay 350. Yung isa naman ay 450. Okay. So imagine, more than 2 million yan. Di ba? Ang nakikinapoporsi ng company na i-invest. Okay. Ang return naman na napoporsi din ng isang company for number 1, 20%. For number 2, 18. For number 3 is 13%. And 16% for number 4. Okay. Ngayon, ang tanong, what projects will constitute the firm's optimal capital budget? Okay, if dividends are treated as residual, how much dividends should be part, should be paid out to shareholders? Okay, yung number one madaling sagutin, di ba? Kasi, okay, from the given, alin ba dito yung mas mataas dun sa 15%? Okay? Diba? The cost of the capital is 15%. Okay. So, dapat mas higher dyan ang lulukat natin. Okay? So, project number 1 will give you 20. So, it is considered 2. Okay. Higher than 15. And this one is lower than 15. So, erase yan. We will not go with this. Okay? And number 4 is 16%. Okay. So, yun ang Yun ang sagot doon. Okay. And since return, I, I, IRR is greater than the cost of capital of 15%, these projects need capital requirement of 2,150,000. And 1,152,500 of this capital requirement will come from equity. Okay. Paano mo? Ayan. So, uh, itong tatlong project na to will cost as 2,150,000. Eh, 2 million lang naman yung, yung ano natin, yung kita natin doon. So, pero ang sabi, yung 55% naman daw ay manggagaling sa equity. 
Di ba given din naman yan? Sinasabi niya, 55%. Okay. Ngayon, so the amount of dividends that should be paid out to equity shareholders is 317,500. Paano yun? Okay. Di ba meron tayong 2 million na earnings before income tax? Okay. And then we will get the 75% allotted. Di ba sabi natin, hindi naman lahat yung 2 million na kinita natin eh ipamimigay mo na dividend. Okay? So, ang declaration ng board of directors is that 75%. Okay. Okay? Is that 75% is given? Okay. So, given din yan. Okay? So, it is given that the 75% will be the dividend. Okay? So, you get the 75% will give us the 1,500,000 for dividend payout. Okay. Since the capital is 1,182,500. Okay. Ito. Ibigyan. Then you simply divide. Okay. Divide this one to this one. You get 317,500 dividends that should be paid out to its shareholders. Okay, yan daw ang ibibigay mo doon sa shareholders mo. So kung marami kayo, okay, kung ilang stocks kayo, kunwari, yung number of stockholders ay 1 million, ay 1, 1 million, o makano lang makukuha mo, okay? Yung number of stocks ang pag-uusapan dyan. Okay, so that's it. The example of payout. So that ends our virtual class today. And thank you for your listening. See you, thank you for another, for continuation of this topic. Okay, bye-bye.